Oh, what a day to be here sitting down with my bro talking about pro wrestling. It is Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building. How are you? <laughs> How are you? We, we've survived a bit, a bit of a scare. Yes, yes. The funny thing is what you guys don't know, right? Right before we came on, uh, everything crashed again. I was like, okay, what is this? What is going on? Is it really TK, the benevolent Tony Khan, the best booker of 2023, 2022? Let's say I can only say good things. If not, uh, you know, <clears throat> things might happen to the stream. Bro, oh. bro, let Go ahead. Everything okay? Everything yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, I, just everything wanted, I just I just wanted to be clear, right? Last week, right? Uh, last week we had a terrible stream in the sense that as we were just about to start, completely everything shut down. No one could hear us yep, to yep. the point that we had to restart the entire stream, and we lost viewers because of that. <laughs> so I, I'm sad to say last week's episode was actually our lowest rated episode. Uh, oh, are you serious? In terms of viewership, last right, week, right. last week, yes. Yeah. Uh, I I don't blame the fans. I know all of you guys. Uh, you know, are always tune in. You guys are our day one fans, but. I have a feeling, bro. These uh. AEW bots are legit, bro. I might get to do some <laughs> investigation, bro. Uh. <laughs> Anytime AEW related topic, uh, somehow but, something or another well, happened, bro. You know, that's the thing, right? Like AEW is putting out such a quality product right now. And therefore, I'm very surprised at what is going on here, you know? Um, yeah, we, we have nothing but great things to exactly. say all the time. Exactly. Tony Khan is the best booker of 2023. No sarcasm. Let me say hello to everybody, by the way. Fias, good to see you. Uh, McJohn Mouse, what's up? Let's go. Uh, yeah, Fias man. says his laptop also crashed just because he said foreign works to Tony Khan. Alamak, see? Uh, yo, you see? Oh, oh, guys, guys. They, they're all listening, bro. They're all listening. They're all listening. Especially for this week's topic, uh... Us <laughs> reviewing AW Blood and Guts. Uh, they are listening <laughs> with uh, very, very, very intently, bro. Uh, Muhammad Daniel, what's up? Good uh, good afternoon to you. And once again, as always, we appreciate you spending your afternoons with us. Maybe you're having lunch or whatever the case may be. I'll tell you what, uh, we have a Discord channel. If you want to come and chat with us about anything wrestling related or even real life related, also can. Uh, you know, some people like to talk about UFC, football also got. Come and join the Discord fam. Hey, bro, you, some people are talking to me about 1975, bro. Suddenly, oh. they are like, uh, foreign, go watch 1975 concert. And then after that, they cause drama in Malaysia. It's bro, not your bro, fault, oh. so. I, I, can we? Because, you know, hey, we are not just about the pro wrestling. We are also about the lifestyle topics and the pop culture and stuff like that. Are you? First of all, okay, uh, let me just get this out of the way. Discord link is in the description. Yes. Also, we have a Patreon page. If you want to take your support for the podcast, that little step further, eh, hey, Whatever is comfortable for you, we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. But okay, yeah. uh, Tovakin, how are you? Um, now, let's talk about the 1975. Are you a fan <laughs> of this band? Uh, they are from okay, the UK, okay. yes? Yes, indeed. Yes. To be, to be, let, let's set some context. Uh. I think mm, mm, mm. it's great to know for people who are listening in or new listeners, right? Yeah. We start the podcast and uh, we catch up with each other's life. Sure, and sure. And somehow it grows into a current affairs, politics. Remember last week, the yep. hot tea about the government? That was uh, our how we started the podcast. This week also got hot tea, bro. Bro, bro, I am telling you, uh, this is our spin-off podcast, Kick to the Face. Or kick, kick to the to balls. The Just like, you know, the, the pressing topics that people want to talk about. You know, uh, we talk about life, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just to answer your question. Yes, Mr. I actually am a fan of 1975. <laughs> I've been listening to them from the start, you know, from 2013. So, yeah. uh, I love their music. They actually came to Singapore in 2019. Uh -huh. I was there. Okay. So, th this time around, they came. They did two sold-out shows. Uh, you know, I, I had my girlfriend come along. Sure. And uh, to be honest, we actually had a fun time in Singapore. But okay. let me tell you, let me tell you some in, something interesting. It was a sneak preview of the the shit that was about to happen in Malaysia, bro. Okay. So so last week, right? Uh, 1975 performed on Tuesday and Wednesday. So yeah. on the second show, which, which was where we were, this uh Matt Healy, the lead singer, right? Mm. He's known for, aka, putting on an act during his uh, performances. So, wait, 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 wait. Do you mean being an asshole? Yeah, yeah it's, an, it's not an, an act per se, but he... he <laughs> made, Okay, because, right, a few a few years ago, he said he's sober already, bro. He's okay. gone clean. Yeah. So, but then he's on stage, he's drinking his whiskey, he's smoking. So, I thought, la, maybe he's putting on an act. Like, maybe he's drinking like a, a non-alcoholic drink and then like pretending to be like drunk or what. Working because, the crowd, as it were. Yeah, yeah. He's working his gimmick. Man. As, a, yeah. as a wrestling fan, you might understand that. So I thought in my mind, okay lah. This, yeah. is, this is his act. So mm. during, the, during the concert, he suddenly sat down in the middle of the stage. He said, hey guys, 
man, I don't see what's the point of life anymore. This is this is his words, huh? Not verbatim, but you know, yeah, yeah. more or less around the same. I don't see the point uh, in life anymore. So, if you were to see me spiral down in the next five to six months, just know that you know it's not your fault. It's just I don't I don't want to do this anymore. So this was him, like pouring his heart out to the crowd per se. Sure. I'm not sure whether it's work or or shoot, right? And then he was like, you know, uh, uh, don't 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 please don't don't feel sorry for me when I fall. But then. The next song right after that monologue was a song entitled Falling For You. Okay. So I was like, when I fall, and then the, the song starts. So I'm like, oh, okay. He wants to segue into the yeah, next yeah. song. You know what I mean? Like, it's an act, right? Yeah. But then I, in my mind, I'm like, actually, this guy something not right with him today. I think he like not in the mood or having an episode, bro. Okay, so wait, wait. When was this in relation to what just happened this past weekend? No, this was last Wednesday only, bro. Oh, so he was in Singapore. Then they went to Malaysia for the Good Vibes Festival, is it? Correct, correct. So he was. Oh. Um, his tour was working their way down Southeast Asia. So he was really spiraling, like quote unquote. Um, I think he's just ha- having issues. And did you know, bro? This is mm. uh some rumors. If you don't follow the celebrity news, okay. This fella had a short term romance with uh, Taylor Swift. Just broke yes. up, right? Yeah, yeah. That I heard about. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, look, I am not a fan of Brit Rock, so I have never really heard a single song by the 1975. I just, you know, read about what happened on stage, right? And mm. you know what it smacks to me of? And I, I don't want to make this, like, this political thing, but mm-hmm. it's uh, it smacks to me of... I, I'm going to just say it. White saviour complex. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying, right? I, yeah, like, I get it. Like, don't go to a country and try to push your political views, your ideology, and this, that, and the other thing. When you very well know you are there to collect a paycheck, then, what, you don't do research on the places you're going? That's on you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And then That's literally what he said on stage, yeah. Well, yeah, and then and then right after that, not only did he cause a whole issue, and obviously the reaction to shut down the entire festival was an overreaction by the government, but it yeah. is something that happens there. If you research, you will know, right? Once again, he's mm. just there for the paycheck. He's like, I'm going to come here, take money. I don't care about your political, your religious, whatever views. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Like, yeah. in the name of saving, like, no, you're not saving anybody. You're just being an, a drunk asshole. And yeah. not only that... This jabroni caused the whole festival to shut down. There's three days festival. The other two days, all the performers, all the vendors, so yeah, many people got exactly. hurt. Because of exactly. this one. Oh, I cannot, bro. You, you're making me upset, bro. Making me upset. Bro, bro, you, 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 this is just a start where you get more upset when we talk about AEW later. But anyway, <laughs> 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 the, the, I, want, I, want, I want to be very clear here, right? Like, yeah, let, yeah. Let's set some context. So what happened was on the first day, mm. he was, the, the 1975 was the headlining act, right? They had mm. Sabrina Carpenter was there performing right before him. They even had Anderson Park. I didn't know Anderson Park was there. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and like, yeah, Daniel Caesar was there. So it was like, mm. it was really good vibes lah, leading up towards the, the, the headline <laughs> well, act, right? <laughs> No pun Un- intended. Yeah, uh, until until he goes on stage and does his whole thing. I mean, okay, I can't remember the sequence of events. Uh, I've read mm-hmm. like a bit too much about it already. But, you know, he destroyed the organizer's drone. He got all like, don't get this fucking shit out of my face. Like, ah, bro, whatever lah. And then, of course, he, he kissed a band member on stage to quote-unquote protest the anti uh, the anti LGBTQIA uh, stance, you know, politically and whatever, right? So, and then he mm-hmm. goes on this whole thing and just, uh, like, I don't know, man. Okay, like I okay, said, the fun- I, mm, go ahead. The, fu- the funny thing is, right, like, to me, right, you want to create a stance or you want to, you know, talk about things. I think there's, there are, there, yeah, there's a place and time for it. There are certain mediums that you can go about it. Mm. My issue is, right, I, I know people who actually travel over to Malaysia to, yeah. to talk to, to to go spend this uh you know their weekend or that event yeah. and they are literally legit fans of 1975. Mm. Uh they really want to hear their music, really want to enjoy themselves yeah. there. Yeah. And I also know some of the local artists uh, yeah. from Malaysia mm. who are all like you know at the so-called undercut, uh, talk, if he's the yeah. main event, they're the undercut, right? And this was like their first big time opportunity to play yeah. in such a big stage. All gone. And yeah, all gone because of this guy. And I and I feel he didn't think through. Of course, he clearly he didn't think through his actions, right? No, he's he wanna... a self, he's a self-entitled savior complex piece of crap. Yeah. And he come there, he caused the whirlwind of chaos. Yeah. And he chabot, he's like, okay, we are banned no. by. But uh, he doesn't think about 
how it affects the rest of that. Exactly. Did he apologize? Yeah. I don't know if he did. I hope he did. Oh, I don't no, think he didn't. He did. He of did. course. Of course. I'm no, on IG story. I know. I yeah, he's standing. I'm sure he's standing by his stance. Oh, I'm. A, you know. Uh, Savior, complex, ah, like, cannot lie, he, cannot, bro. He really, then, he really thought he did a thing. He really thought, yeah, oh, no, yeah, I, no, he, yeah. he just made himself look like an asshole. I've never listened to his music. Now I will never want to listen to his music. I don't care how good it is. You know yeah, what I mean? It's such a shame. It's such uh, a shame because, like, yeah, you, uh, it's like me. Okay, and mm. I, I'm, I'm tired of being fans of problematic people. <laughs> whether <laughs> it's CM Punk, <laughs> whether it's 1975, always give me a bad rap. At, but, at least, but, yeah. And at least my guy, ah, uh, Chris Jericho, he just do stupid, stupid thing. He never <laughs> cause <laughs> major chaos. Yours are always, you know, got problems, uh, no? massive problems. Yeah, you, so oh, maybe it's a reflection of me. Maybe I need to reflect on myself. Uh. Right. Why am I hey, no, kid, yeah. you know the kid Leroy? He actually uh, he landed in KL, right? And then found out that his concert got cancelled, so he performed in the hotel lounge. I yeah, mean, I'm gonna listen to Kid Leroy's music now. Right, yeah, no, I like I, I saw him perform at the F1 in the rain. Yep. Like, dude got energy. I'm not a huge fan of his music, but I'm a fan of the person now. So, yep. you know, a lot, say what you want. A lot of it is like this whole, like, oh, you want to be a bad boy. Like, I don't think yeah. that flies in 2023. My favorite thing about the whole situation is, like, of course, the Malaysian netizens, you do not mess with Malaysian citizens. Okay. Netizens, I mean, netizens. online, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, for any of our Malaysian listeners listening, right, you know, what I love is, right, when Malaysians get collectively outraged, right, mm. their comments are hilarious, especially if you understand <laughs> Malay, bro. Oh, right, right. Okay, so, okay. Well, I, let me just share, just say why. Sure, sure, go, go. Get, get a kick out of it. So, like, he was talking about his white savior, the, the, there was a TikTok live stream of him filming and all that, right? Yeah. And then, you know, the comment below, right, because mm. he was he was talking all that nonsense. The mm. comment below was like, "Diam lah, babi." <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> I mean, quiet lah, pig. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shut up, pig. And then um, another one is like, "Dah lah, tak handsome." What's that? Re- no, no. What was that? What's that mean? You already not. You already not handsome. Want to step? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like when, when, yeah, Malay when they talk shit and roast people is right. fucking hilarious. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, okay, let, let, let's put a, a wrestling spin on it, right? And say yeah. what you want about the WWE. Look at what they are doing. Slowly yeah. in acting change. See, they are smart enough. And okay, yes, I'm sure everyone will point out, yeah, they are a big corporate entity. Of course, they're going to play it safe, right? Like doing yeah. the whole Saudi Arabia tours and stuff like that. But do you see how they slowly enacted change bit by bit? You know, having the women's, the first women's match. Remember when they had to wear like literally a potato sack? Then after that, slowly it got better and better. And then, you know, like, you know, they're still covered up, but they respect the culture, right? I mean, you want to enact change. That's great. You want to stand for something that's great. But you don't go out there and then swing completely one end of the spectrum. Because you know what's going to happen? They will swing all the way the other side and the whole thing gets cancelled. This is yeah. not how you convince people. You, you attract, <laughs> you attract uh, flies with honey, you know. Mm. But you sometimes you you can yeah. you, know, you get, uh, attract flies with shit also But that's a different metaphor yeah. altogether. So that that is like watching a car crash and it getting millions of views online. Yeah, so I yeah. get what you mean. Uh, no, no, the, you're you're <sighs> absolutely right. I feel like uh, again, let me reiterate. There's a time and place for everything. Sure, sure. Um, you don't go. I don't go to Mister Young's house and start. I don't know what lah. <laughs> you know, start causing a ruckus. I know you. You love to keep your house in order. I'm not gonna go there and start fucking like just pulling yeah. around naked and like. Woo! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, you exactly. Gotta respect it. the house, you know. Yes, it's respect where you're going. And well, if any, like, didn't he cancel his Jakarta and his Taipei tour as well? Oh, bro, yeah. All because Peter Fest was right afterwards, right? Yeah. At least the Jakarta, uh, you know, the Indonesian government didn't uh, overreact and cancel the whole tour. Correct. But bro, if he tried that shit in Jakarta, I think he will die, bro. You know, oh. the Islam. <laughs> No, because I, 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 Indonesia is the most populous Islamic country in the whole world. You know that, right? Oh, is it really? I did not know. I did not know that. No, it's even. Oh. It's, I mean, because of the sheer size of the country, that's right. one thing. But it's, it has a bigger Muslim population than Saudi Arabia than any oh. other Muslim country. Bro, the you don't play play with them, sir. I think Malaysia <laughs> is yes. Malaysia will be overread online. Indonesia will like, wow, oh, but you, bro. Don't say with them. <laughs> so it's, he saved himself like, by avoiding that. Well, I mean, there you go. Oh my God. I don't believe we spent 20 minutes talking about pop music. So how, bro? How, guys? What do you think? Kick to the, kick to the balls. 
new current yeah. affairs podcast, lifestyle bro, podcast. We, on and on. Slowly, we slowly enact change, uh, bro. We can start the the every podcast. We can talk about what happened this week, and, current affairs. And, and you know, can, yeah. you you know, this is a, a deeper. There's a deeper meaning to this. There, there's yeah, a deeper goal, right? We start talking about current affairs. We pull in people who are interested in current affairs. Then we hit them with the wrestling. And then they get bro, into wrestling, bro. We are spreading the gospel of pro wrestling, man. Bro, everything leads to pro wrestling. What are we talking about? Yes. Anything in life, right, can connect to wrestling. If you know, you know. Bro, don't even get me started on like office politics and like, you know, oh. the WWE politics. All got <laughs> parallel on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, the reason why we have such a long preamble, I think we really don't want to review AEW Blood and Guts. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but you know, you know, but, uh, well, out of our responsibility to the podcast, I think we'll, we'll definitely give our comments for sure, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we'll get there, right? Okay, Um, here's the thing. I'll be very honest with you. I skipped most of that Dynamite and went straight to the main event because I didn't care anymore. Like, I don't care uh, about Dynamite anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah. Um, and I mean, I tried to because okay, I haven't watched like I said, I haven't watched Dynamite in a while. So I'm like, okay, mm. at least I've sort of detoxed from the flippy shit. <laughs> so I thought maybe I can tahan this. Oh, dear, Bro, okay. I was like rolling my eyes so hard at the the try hardness of this mm. blood and guts match. Um, was this the worst blood and guts match thus far? Yeah, and this is it's it's, it's uh, not really a high bar, but yeah. honestly, like I really enjoyed like Inner Circle versus mm. Pinnacle, uh, Black and Guards. Even last year, BCC versus I think BCC JAS. at that point in time was yeah. the the baby face and against yeah. JAS. Um, yeah, it felt like the violence felt. Uh, I wouldn't use the word real, but there was an intensity to that violence. Yeah. That we weren't laughing at the spots if they fall onto like a bit of thumbtacks, uh, right? It's like, yep. oh damn, okay. Yeah. But but this particular one, I just don't know, maybe we are rolling our eyes too much because of whatever Mox is up to. Um, You know, of course, Golden Elite, they have their fans, right? I sure. am also... I also enjoy Kota Ibushi in some of the New Japan matches. Yeah. But in this presentation... I just didn't feel he stood out in any way. Well, we know that AEW has a problem with like, you know, really presenting foreign megastars, right? Like, I, Yeah, I agree. E- every forbidden door, they never build them up. So we are just expected to know who they are and what legacy they come with, right? And yeah, yeah like you said, a lot of the spots felt hokey. Felt, yeah. It felt like indie bullshit. Like, it's, it's crazy because, okay, let me take you back to WrestleMania Triple H versus Batista. They, mm. If you think about it, they didn't do anything really that dangerous, but it felt intense. The the spot where he ripped the the the, the ring out of Batista's nose. Do you remember yeah. that one with the pliers? Of course. That looks so like I, I was cringing, right? But uh, here, even even as easily as remember Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton, the, screwdriver the, the, through the year. Yes, yes. That that felt like ooh. Here everything was ooh, but in a what the hell are you like? You know like. Oh, dude. <laughs> Fia uh, says uh, he felt uh, asleep halfway. He fell asleep halfway. Uh, oh, also, God. and yes, the giant irony of them announcing their big safety protocols. Well, okay, if you notice properly, uh, they did stick to the protocol in that they didn't involve the audience too much. There was no John Moxley going into the audience while bleeding, that kind of stuff, because that's yeah, forbidden. The rest of the stuff, they probably, like I said, they got um, permission one, what? All they needed to do was say, oh, um... Tony, boss, friend, best friend, bro. I bleed, huh? Okay, on. I bring... <laughs> I bleed on. Oh, yeah, on. I bring bed of nails, huh? Okay, on. Like, and, and some of we all know this group is like Tony Khan's favorite guys, right? So, of course, he's going to just yeah. say yes to everything. What? Yeah, no, I think my issue with this match was really... Like, okay, let's talk about the best War Games matches, uh, whether it's in NXT or in WWE. Even let's talk about last year's WWE War Games where they had Bloodline... Versus like yep. the other guys, right? Bro, the story running through the yep. match, like Sami Zayn getting ordered around, yep. Sami Zayn trying to win over the bloodline by kicking Kevin Owens. Mm. The stories was what made me feel like, mm. okay, okay, um, I can follow the action. It, was mm. just, it wasn't just mindless action. But, okay, people might argue my point and say, hey, God... Story what got uh what uh Park walk out from uh, Claudio not happy with Claudio or like Takeshita leaving or yeah. I don't know you know you know they they might see that but the problem is those things were done for like 
oh shock factor oh just a thing it didn't there, there was nothing that led up to their issues but suddenly come back suddenly got issue with Claudio yeah no no that's that's exactly it there was absolutely no build Park returning was a surprise and then him leaving of course nobody will give a flying because he wasn't invested in this storyline to begin with the cash card maybe got a little bit more and then him getting pulled out by uh, Don Callis was like uh, oh because one fella left so he's like oh I don't want my client to get hurt or some such logic like that right Mm-hmm. So it was like, uh, yeah, and then, well, I don't know, is this a cheap way of making them look good even in losing? But like, you know what I mean? Per- like, perhaps, perhaps. And but, of course, uh, wasn't it Yuta that took the loss? Or was it? Yes, Yuta took okay. the loss because of the chain around his neck. They, oh, they strangled no. him at the end, yeah. But, but apparently it was Mox who submitted for Yuta because he didn't want Yuta to get hurt or something like that. Well, again, the fact that we had to explain it to ourselves and try to make sense. No, yeah, it was convoluted. Watching the show, it was terrible. Yeah. No, it was convoluted AF. Okay, what did you think of the bit of nails? Um, I, I just felt it was so... Extra? It, it, it's almost violence, like an overindulgence in violence to yep. the point that... Okay, you know, if you watch too much porn, you can't steam anymore. It's literally that. It's literally <laughs> that, bro. No, but this is what we've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, only just without using that analogy. But that's exactly it, bro. <laughs> it's exactly it, bro. It's, it's, it's an absolute desensitization of their product. Their product is so, like, I, we are so desensitized to it. That's why, like, even though I thought I hadn't watched AEW in, like, three weeks, I could come in and stomach this. I couldn't because it was violence for the sake of violence as opposed to telling a story, doing something that people would feel for. You know, they're great yeah. like performers in terms of like athleticism and whatnot, but good God, man. The second Mox went in, glass. What? Yeah. I like, think Mox really ruined the whole scenario because the woman yeah, yeah. he coming, he had a fork, he was stabbing people. Yeah, yeah. He got was doing all this nonsense. Broken glass, got this. It's like, why are you escalating right off the bat? You know, like, I, I think I think also another thing that I really was disappointed about the match. It was mm. I didn't hate it, but I was disappointed. Mm. It was Kota Ibushi's involvement in the match yeah. and how he was portrayed. Mm. Because right, okay, even if you're not a fan of him, you don't know anything about him. They hype him up like he's a big deal, right? Yeah. They didn't make him a major component of the match. You didn't see him face to face with Mox or having like a stare down. Or like, they didn't even tease like Kenny Omega and Ibushi like hugging, like it's supposed to be an emotional moment, didn't mm. feel anything. Um, So I just feel like the way they laid out and presented each characters wasn't well done at all. Nope, nope. Um, Once again, it's almost as if this whole idea of, oh, you should know, right? And it permeates the entire product on Dynamite, might I add. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, um, it was, I'm not going to watch dynamite again apparently they did well <laughs> ratings wise you know like apparently mm-hmm. there was a, a, a an uptick the highest it's been in five months oh but, i see do you, do you know the numbers for that no i don't have the exact numbers but it's the highest they've been in five months which you know i mean it kind of makes sense it's a whole gimmick match right i just hope yep. that they don't take this as an indication that oh we should do more if anything, do less. Tell yeah. stories, you know? Which... To, to, yeah, sorry. Tobaki brought a great mm. point. K- Kota really looks sluggish and out of shape. And I will remember a time when Kota was as jack as like Park. Park, right. Park looked jack. I mean, I, I love Park's Bro, physique, right? He, Park is always jacked. Every time he shows up, he's like, literally, he, he shows up at the press conference in his trunks and he's jacked, right? Bro, he, his abs like granite, bro. So yeah. respect to him. But yeah. maybe maybe that's what he's been doing. He actually doesn't wrestle. He just gym every day. When he shows up, like, yeah, I'm Jack. And that's it. That's all he does. Is it? Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, right, he wasn't the big deal of the match, right? It was no. supposed to be I- Ibushi. And Ibushi, knowing that this moment was coming. And he has been a freelancer. He has been a free agent since the start of the year. Mm. He come in, he looked like he looked like me right now. Bro, it's like, <laughs> bro okay, let's not go too far. I look like you. Hey. What are you trying to say about him? No, I, I mean, I got a dead bot, man. But I don't think he got a dead bot. But I'm saying that he doesn't look show ready. You know Right, I mean? right, right, right. And, yeah, and you know, this, yeah. Um, like I said, maybe, maybe it's his buddy trying to get Tony Khan to sign him. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, because this is all, all friends wrestling, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and like, you know, I feel like if they introduce him properly, mm. like not just by a freaking like, 
package uh, like oh look at the throne look at the stage and then they have like a one second one minute package yeah, yeah. of him introduce himself cut the promo even if he's in Japanese with <sighs> subtitles you know I will feel that, that's the issue right most of us wrestling fans mm. who follow New Japan or maybe are really deep into all these dirt sheets yes we know Ibushi we, we respect him we love what he's done but if you're trying to grow your audience in AEW yeah. like why should I care? Like people will care about Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, even though they, they don't follow anything about him. Yeah, because they present it so well before the matches in WWE. They know how to tell stories, and the elite, this group lah, basically for whatever reason, is either they don't know or they don't want to. They just play cheat code all the time and do flippy shit. You know, because yeah. that's what they that's what they love to do. You know, John Moxley loves to bleed, Bucks love to flip, Kenny loves to flip, you know, it's 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 their thing, right? And I think we've said it before, you know, it's work for them because on the indies you don't see them all the time. When you see it in real life once every few months, of course it blows your mind. Word of mouth travels, right? Like you see like short little 30 second clips, but episodic television, week in, week out, you see the same shit, it, it, you're done. I want yeah. I want another reason to care for you other than you can do you know uh, whatever a moon saw onto a bit of nails or some shit like that. Is this the end of this rivalry? <laughs> Good God, please yes, yeah, just <laughs> no. The bucks need to go away for a while, and and I don't mean that in a I hate oh Mister Young hates the young bucks. No, no, they need to take a break because um they've been there but they've done done nothing. Does that make sense? Where was the last time you saw an emotional Young Bucks promo where they open up about themselves? No, but here's the thing. Every single promo that they've done have been hokey, jokey, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, exactly. And, and some people say, oh no, you should have watched the uh, All Elite uh, backstage or what behind the scenes. Remember no, that show? Nobody watched. No, ah, stop. Yeah, la. exactly. Nobody watched. Nobody watched that. Nobody watched Dynamite. So Dynamite is actually, it's a bigger audience. All the best stuff where you can introduce the characters should be on Dynamite, not all yes. the best shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think they hinted that it is because they shook hands after the man. Yeah, you know, it's like that, that's the other thing, too. Like, only their fans will care that they've disappeared. I don't think anybody else really cares, you know. The top people that need to disappear and take a break from it right now is uh, Young Bucks. I think Chris Jericho, I'm sorry to say, sure. Chris Jericho no, needs, no. A, yeah. needs a break. He needs yeah. a break. Yeah. yeah. And, and the only thing is, right, like, I feel Kenny Omega honestly should separate himself and go on a singles run or at mm. least have, a, I think, just be presented his own solo character for a while. Yes. Uh, e- even in my opinion, right, Hangman Page has lost a ton of momentum. Mm. He's just blended into the background in this whole elite uh, faction. Yeah, lah. hanging so, out with his friends, lah. you know, just riding their coattails because they are the EVPs. Um, look, let's let's put a bow on this shit sandwich that is uh, uh, blood and guts. You know, do they should they rest this gimmick? Should they should they not do it for a few years? Or do only do it when there is a rivalry that calls for it, as opposed to once again, the whole idea of doing it because it's an event. I think blood and guts. Because people already is so conditioned to know that okay, January, mm. July, uh, sorry, June, July period is gonna be a blood and guts match, right? It becomes a bit pa- pa- passe, right? Yep. But I still think that it's okay to keep this as their signature event. Yeah. But maybe not like every July. Play it mm. around like how it used to have to introduce Hell in a Cell when the situation uh, calls for it, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, no, I wouldn't say retire it, but. Just use it sparingly when mm. a situation calls for it. Only when the feud calls for it. Lah. Like when there's an organic, okay, this is really heating up. Let's build towards it. As opposed to, like we've talked about, like, you know, WWE is very guilty of this as well. Like they have their Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and then they just put random people in Hell in a Cell because it's the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view as opposed to yeah. because you're blowing off a feud. Yeah, luckily they fixed that issue. Yep. Um, yep. And I think Hell in a Cell, the recent matches have been worthwhile and yep. made sense in the context. Uh, Pia says yeah. John Moxley also needs a break. We didn't mention John, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah he needs a break. Like, Bro, he, I think big, if I was Rene Young, right, I'm like, I need my man at home to not bleed. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro, like uh, I, I saw bits and heard clips about his whole like thesis on bleeding and bleeding. It's like hilarious. Wow. He hilarious. he really uh, I don't know, man. I don't like maybe going back to the WWE is the best thing for him. 
for his health, for everything. Yeah. There, at least you have people who will like try to tell him, hey, you know, like relax a bit, lah. Yeah, uh, they, okay. I don't know whether I don't know how to pull up this clip. But I remember seeing online, um, Randy Orton talking about John Moxley. It was the most hilarious soundbite ever. Huh. Uh, Randy was like, you know, when I first met, um, uh, John uh, or Dean Ambrose, like I, I just didn't get him. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? What's he up to? Right. And then after a while, after spending time with him, like it just all made sense to me. Oh yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and then he's like, but that's alright. I mean, all of us are fucking weirdos. You just accept sure. it. Like, okay, now now I get it. I get who he is. I can like act or react accordingly, interact Correct. accordingly with him. Correct. He <laughs> really is a weirdo, bro. Uh, wow, well, yeah. And there's all sorts, right? Fia says, imagine at home they argue straight away he blamed himself. Every small thing. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you... Mox, why didn't you take out the trash? <laughs> it's just bleeding all over the couch. I'm hungry. Ah. <laughs> this this pasta is too salty. <laughs> I think Moxley can be a great soft park character. Bro. Just, 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 every, just bleeding on it. Yeah, just everything. No reason. Just bleeding already. Somebody cut him off in traffic. All of a sudden, the next scene, you see him crimson mask while he's driving his car. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I think he he might oh. think that he's trying to be like you know Tough guy. intense and serious, like a badass. You know? But he doesn't realize people are making fun of him, you know. Making fun of him for his inability to read the room. That's the is whole it, point. Read the room. He's basically... Uh, he's bought into his own hype. Lah. He's sold he, he sold this idea of this character to himself. And he's that guy now. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with believing in your character. But there's a difference between that and believing your own hype. Yeah. Which is I, the I, point you're trying to make. Yeah? I think that's where he is right now. Okay, so yes, let him take a rest. For God's sake, let let Claudio, let Claudio do something good, like for yeah. crying out loud, you know, like let let him be a main focus somewhere somehow. Well, to be fair, he is a main focus on Ring of Honor. They had a pay per view, and apparently the main event was uh, Claudio and Park, which Did- he was like, okay, that was a great, uh, it's a great matchup. Sounds but- yeah, sounds like it. But the problem is that bill was a one week bill from Blood and Guts. Yeah, um, like literally, I didn't even realize there was death before dishonor, right? Uh, I didn't know that event was pay per view was even happening until like I saw a, a, a post about it. I'm like, oh, okay, like literally yeah. zero hype for Ring of Honors yeah now. Like, what is going on? No, it was zero hype because they didn't build up the match card until literally the week off or like a few days before. They didn't <sighs> even have a main event until after Blood and Guts. So I think that's also a failure on Tony Khan's part again. I mean, you mean Tony Khan is too busy to deal with these minutia, brother. Tony Khan is a very good man. He's a very busy oh, so man. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course he is. Yeah. He's incredibly busy and I think for his sake, he should delegate his work more. Yeah. Put somebody in charge of Ring of Honor. He freaking, they have a good on my opinion, they have a great <laughs> commentary team, right? They have Ian Rekaboni. Yeah, they yeah. got uh, what Caprice Coleman. They actually not put. Uh, if you, I know you don't follow, but apparently Stokely Hathaway is like their GM per se. Oh, okay, charge. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he, always been a very good promo. Yeah, I think he's like a evil Teddy Long. He's like a Teddy Long Skrull. You know oh. what I mean? Like he can do it. <laughs> he can do it. Uh, Jason says ROH main event was Athena versus Trinity for the Knockout Championship. Was it really? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I heard, I heard. Uh, they ended it, they closed it with Willow versus Athena, right? Willow mm. versus Athena. No, no, Athena versus Trinity is what Jason is saying. Really? Not Trinity? Trinity was at Slammiversary, what? I thought no, it's, but did... for the knockout championship, which is the Impact title, right? Oh, Can yeah, somebody... yeah. Oh, yeah, somebody please uh, confirm check. this. Fact yeah, check. yeah, because yeah. obviously uh, I didn't care and you, <laughs> you didn't uh... watch. Bro, do you see? Uh, oh yeah, Tovaki brought up a funny point. Mm. <laughs> Next week, Puck is gonna fight Gravity, bro. The man that for Gravity didn't forget. <laughs> Literally a wrestler. Who the hell is Gravity? Oh my god, AEW star bringing in random. And I'm sure uh, Excalibur will freaking nut his pants again talking about this guy Gravity like we know him like that, like he's the next coming of Jesus. You know, he's like, uh, oh my god, Gravity. Oh, he's the, the triple champion from Triple A. <laughs> You know? Uh, well, he, well, he actually, you're, you're half right. He is from... <laughs> oh, is he from... <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, with a you name like anyhow. Gravity. You know, like, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure he will just go nuts and talk about how amazing this guy is. L- literally, nobody will know who he is. You know? Oh, I mean, okay. Loki, Gravity, Commander, if they build up a Cruiserweight division, it actually might be Bro, like, oh, okay. If you, build, yes. if you build them up, 
people will watch them because they are amazing athletes. Uh, the Viking Go fellow also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've but, got no issue with them per se, no. but it's how they're presented. No, exactly. It's like, oh, uh, we need. Uh, he got. We got visiting wrestler. Hey, you come lah. You wrestle lah. You wrestle. Come ah. We'll build it like literally no build. All of a sudden, it's Kenny Omega versus Viking Man. And it's like who? What? What's going on? Like yeah. Once again, once again, I know that Tony Khan is a very busy, very altruistic man. Yes, yes, incredibly. So, Okay, we're still here. Very good. Uh, <laughs> so maybe he needs to delegate all that kind of stuff to somebody else who can bu- uh, handle the burden so he doesn't have to deal with the small things. Ah, all right. Bro, I, I was reading my football news, right? Like mm. articles, right? Literally sure. anything Fulham related, uh, transfer and all that. To- and Tony Khan said, blah, 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 blah. So you got a Tony Khan quote on Fulham. And I'm thinking to myself, how did this guy's face appear? He can still handle transfers in Fulham and still yeah. do everything that he's doing in wrestling. Bro, Fulham, Jacksonville, Jaguars and AEW, he is stretching himself thin. He is, he is. Like, yeah. um, well, okay, uh, I mean, to, to move on from the whole uh, main event scene in Dynamite, like, mm. I would like to say, okay, at least one thing that they randomly throw on the wall to make it stick, I think MGF and Adam Cole has somehow, okay, we can be entertained by it. But what, what's your thoughts on them winning this whole blind eliminator tournament? Okay, first of all, you knew they were going to win because this pairing is like, the two talents involved are going to make it work, right? Because you know what they can do. Um, MGF definitely has the comedic chops, but you know yeah. that this is going to be a case of they will turn on each other at one point. Lah. You know, Adam Cole will be the baby face. MGF will be, ah, don't trust the devil. He's always the devil, right? Uh, yeah. It works. I think it works. And it, like you're... Right, it's entertaining, but it has taken such a back seat. And MGF is the world champion. Like, yeah, that's okay. not how you highlight your world champion. You know, I would want them to swerve everyone mm. and actually let MGF convince Adam Cole or somehow get him over to the dark side, and then right. break up with like not break up but like you know turn turn his back on Britt Baker, mm. uh, betray his friend Roddy, like. If that goes into that, I think that's another layer. That's a level up in their storytelling if they can do that. Bro, bro. Um, I think it would take a lot to ditch Britt Baker for MJF. Just saying. Like, I, uh, I don't know what he can offer, bro. Maybe a title shot? I don't know. Maybe. But like, th- that, that doesn't quite make sense to me. Why would you give up Britt Baker for MJF? I mean... Yeah, man. Damn. Britt Baker every night you can get like... Yeah. Good, good dental help. You know what I mean? Good, like, yes. Worth it, bro, to have Free, that. As you know. Yeah, you know, uh, dental care is expensive, bro. That's that's the that's the <laughs> that's the real benefit. Um, yeah, look, they're gonna have fun with FTR, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, this means they'll show up more on die. Uh, not dynamite. Uh, collision. Which yes, it well, it, that's actually exactly the case, right? Because mm. they won their match uh, against yep. uh, Guevara and G- Garcia. So this weekend collision, uh, I think the main event. I think it is the main event. Yep. FTR defending the tag team titles against MGF and Adam Cole. So you know that's gonna be yeah. nothing Bang else. Up. A great match, right? Um, and I, I, I guess that is a good you know segue into collision as well because you know we're talking about collision having come on the air and it's been six weeks in. A bit uh, more than a month, yeah. More, more than a month already. So how are we in general, and chat, please weigh in, all right? how are we in general feeling about AEW Collision? Because looking at the numbers, it's very interesting, right? So mm. AEW Collision, even though they have less viewers than Dynamite, it's probably a, it's like a Saturday thing, right? But mm-hmm. by and large, when you look at their breakdowns, hourly, quarterly breakdowns, they they have an audience and it just fluctuates up and down, and then, but it doesn't change that much. It maintains, you know what I mean? Versus... No an AEW Dynamite, they lose, like most of the time, they will lose by the time the main event happens. So they yeah. are on a downward trajectory, whereas Collision, maintain. It's actually kind of what WWE, Raw, and SmackDown is. Sort of like this maintain. Maybe up and down a bit, but maintain. Yeah, another point also that um, you didn't mention, right, is that mm. even though, yes, they start off with a core audience and they maintain, right, yeah. they always, so far the trend is they always pop a number for the mm. main event. So sure. people are not only staying, they build enough of a hook at the start of the show yep. that people want to tune in for the main event. Mm. And even though, yes, it's a small sample size, right? We have, yep. they're, they're averaging 500,000 and 600,000. But this, this audience, I believe, has the potential to grow more 
Yep. As opposed to Dynamite, where Dynamite is like people watch at the beginning, they're like, ah, okay, I don't want to stay anymore. Then yeah, they yeah. just leave towards yeah. the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, what does that say? I think it is, it's very telling in terms of like, you know, the talent that are on Collision, the type of storytelling that's being done on Collision. Unfortunately, Collision suffers from another problem. We've talked about it being the event before pay-per-views, mm-hmm. which means every time there's a pay-per-view, you know there's going to be some dynamite shenanigans bullshit. Like what happened before Forbidden Dollar? Yeah, agree, agree. And also, I think another problem which our listeners, uh, uh, mm. people who are on our Discord brought up great points, by the way. This last, uh, this most recent episode of Collision, I don't know whether you watched it. I, uh, yeah, kind of just glanced it, eyeballed it, yeah. Yeah, the the main event, so eventually the, the show started out with Ricky Starks coming in celebrating his world title win, right? Or yeah. Owen Hart Cup uh, Foundation Owen, yeah. win. Mm. He celebrated like a baby face Mm -hmm. to me he gave a lot of attitude but it still felt like a baby face promo okay but then the end of the match or the end of the show the main event he was partnered up with christian cage a full flat shield yes on the opposite side we have cm Pao, who they clearly are positioning as a baby face yeah but the crowd is booing him like a heel and he also plays along to that so now he's a Basically, a mixed reaction guy. Yeah. Teaming up with Darby Allen. So, <laughs> do you understand the problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this weird, like, okay, who is supposed to cheer for who? What? Like, what are everybody's alignments here? Exactly, exactly. And the problem is, right, that might cause confusion in the audience and that might affect the opportunity to, uh, for, for, for casuals to, like, cheer for who they, they like, right? But, but, bro, whose fault is this? Whose fault is this? Exactly. No, 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 no. Like, for real, whose fault is this? It's, it's the elite. They are the one who sowed the seeds of discontent when it comes to their fan base. Because let's mm-hmm. not forget, the original AEW fan base are Young Bucks fans. Yeah. And because of what they did with CM Punk sowing all the, you know, the rumors and the uh, yeah. stuff like that. And then, of course, the Adam Page thing, then the whole thing blew up. Now, all of a sudden, like you have this core audience booing the guy who's supposed to be your top baby face. Yeah, you're right. The casuals will be confused. It's like, huh? Well, I'm not supposed to cheer this guy. Like, I don't know, right? And no. that sends mixed signals and therefore it's very hard to, you know, build storylines around that. I mean, I trust in CM Punk to be able to overcome it because he's such a veteran. Mm. He's amazing on the stick. And yeah, yeah but I, I get your point about this Ricky Starks thing. Ricky Starks, that's the problem. See, he's a much younger, greener guy, right? And he needs to be able to, like, work with somebody who's a full-fledged heel or babyface. Yeah. So at least he can position himself as opposed exactly. to, like, now flopping in the wind, like, not here, not there. Yeah, and, and uh, the thing is, we all want Ricky Stark to succeed. I mean, yeah. he has had so many false dawns. Um, you know, he's been put, put badly in recent uh, months before this yep. recent run. So now he got this momentum of being the own heart foundation winner. I would like him, if they're going to commit to make him a, a heel, make him the top heel, yeah. uh, like on co- fighting with CM Punk. Yeah, on collision, at least place him in situation where he can succeed. Yeah. Um, but the problem is they need a lot of work. They need to invest more time in Ricky Starks. They need to invest more time in freaking uh, Miro. Mm. Um, Miro, I, Miro, I feel like he's doing great, but he doesn't have a story right now. Will Hobbs needs to get yeah. so far away from QT Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, wait. so, okay. Isn't the story right now CM Punk losing twice in a row? Yes, that's the story. Yeah. So that like that's like the big like, whoa, you know, like what's going on? What if, uh, what if uh, they throw us for a curve and all of a sudden Ricky Starks and CM Punk sort of join forces and Ricky Starks becomes like, you know, his protege, as it were. Don't you think that would be pretty cool? I, I don't mind. I think that's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, I even might see how they can pay, play their way into it when they see, talk about how... Because Ricky Starks has been cheating both times, right? Use the yeah. ropes for both wins. Yeah. Maybe CM Punk can respect that. But my problem is if CM Punk and him join forces, mm-hmm. become allies, are they heels? And if they become heels, who are they going to fight? Who are the baby faces there? FTR, bro! Oh, yes, uh, my guys, yeah. Uh, or MJF and Adam Cole, baby! So and MJF and Adam Cole become the four, four baby faces and then yeah. the opposite is true for Ricky Starks and CM Punk, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, and you know, this gives everybody a big rub and we all know that CM Punk and MJF have history as well and it's you know kind of re- unresolved also so uh, oh okay or well, maybe it's too soon maybe it's too soon to bring them back together again yeah 
Well, looking forward, okay, we all mm. know right now AEW is building towards All In. Wembley yeah. Stadium Wembley, in the August. Big mm. The big show, right? Do you feel like they have the ability to put on the kind of card that is deserving of that? Because, right, why <sighs> I pre- let me preface this. Because, right, you got one CM Punk who, as hot as he was when he first returned, mm. I would say he lost some of the momentum, to oh, be yeah, honest. Of course, yes, yes. Right? You know, we, people get used to him and blah, blah, blah. But they, if they had pulled the trigger on a huge feud, mm. a clear rival, then you know that, okay, I'm excited to see them blow it off at uh, All In. Wait, but the thing is... When is All In? Uh, I believe it's middle of August. So it's like a 20... Is it oh. 27? 20, yeah, around there. Okay, so middle uh, or end, la, end August. Yeah, yeah. But, but the problem is, right, he has been thrown around in... Too many different directions yep. since his collision debut. He got one time he fight with Bullet Club Goal. Yep. One time he go fight with Samoa Joe. Mm. And then suddenly now Ricky Stark. So hey, can, can I like I uh, sorry for interrupting, but can I just very quickly say um I'm really starting to enjoy Bullet Club Goal or whatever yeah. they call themselves, Gin and Juice, whatever like their promos and their work. Uh, yeah. Like you know. And like, and this is coming from you have you didn't really watch JY in New Japan, no. right? So it's like your first look at him. Well, uh, that's because Jay White talks less now. You notice it's uh, uh it's, it's the who already ah shit I forgot his name Juice um, Juice, Juice Robinson Juice Robin because like I mean we talked about it before he looks like a crazy MF you know what I mean yeah, like he, is. he literally is, he yeah. he gives off the vibe and it works it just works for him he's got that Brian Pillman vibe where you're like oh shit like he's nuts and I don't want to mess with him you know and and he's he's a good promo. Yeah, I remember that this one promo that they did to start off the show. Yeah. It's the Bang Bang Gang, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you mad? Who's this mad fella, you know? And, and then he was, they were with uh, the guns, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, actually, I love the guns aligning with Bullet Club. I think yeah. it's a great notch on them. Uh, and we didn't mm. mention one more thing, bro. Mm. Speaking of the guns, do you see what happened with Malachi oh. Black and Billy Gunn? So he took off his boot while he... Uh, did he take off the whole boot or he just undid his shoelace? Bro, it was a very long, very uncomfortable three minutes, but he took off all his shoelaces <laughs> and the boot, yeah. Okay, so what is this whole, like, tease? I believe that uh, Malachi Black whispered something in his... Uh, I don't know what kind of uh, phone sex that he did, but he whispered something in Billy Gunn's ear. Yeah, yeah. And after that, he bro- he helped him up, actually, to his, mm. to his feet. And Billy Gunn just retired. So, I mean, uh, tease a retirement, perhaps, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I-, I like that. You know why? Because... It shows like oh they are, they they not only obliterated uh, the acclaim to the point that uh, it causes doubt within Billy Gunn, but then there's this intrigue on like oh okay shit like did he, did maybe, he really like retire after that? Yeah, or maybe he decided oh shit I can't cut it anymore. But or or maybe his foot a bit swollen so he just no. take off his shoe. <laughs> Bro, no, no, it's not maybe that. that it's not. Can you imagine next week they promo? Oh, actually, you know, I I had a, a ingrown toenail. It was really irritating me. That's why I took off my boot in the middle of the ring, and uh, Malachi was holding me up because it was painful. Okay, okay, cheap plug, cheap plug. I actually for sports Hida, uh previously, right? I remember <laughs> I wrote there was this uh storyline like like what what would the five directions for Billy Gunn you know if mm. he chooses to leave the acclaim uh, I might send it up on our Patreon and Please. I actually talk about I actually talk about how he could turn heel on the acclaim that's one but mm. he could rejoin his kids I mean it's a logical step isn't it yeah but imagine you join his kids and join another faction Bullet Club oh god no 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 <laughs> Oh, Bullet, the uh, old man uh, in Bullet Club go joining all the wow. factions, bro. Check. <laughs> ah, yeah, just put him in every bloody faction. Lah. Um, okay, I mean, just, just to keep a cap on it, I think um, Collision is looking strong. I think yeah. it, it doesn't help that it has to go up against, um, you know, PLEs, UFCs, and stuff like that. So it's always going to have hiccups. But yeah, mm. I, I don't know who suggested, just imagine if for a couple of weeks they switch shows, switch time slots. Wow. Can you collision. imagine what could possibly happen if, you know, like Collision was on Wednesday and Dynamite was on Saturday? I mean, I mean, for sure, the audience will grow. You can, you confirm or you put them on that yeah. Wednesday slot, they will, they will hit a million easily. Yeah, but I mean, uh, we'll never know unless something really drastic happens with, you know, the mm. EVPs. 
Well, uh, I also need to think about the long-term future for Collision, right? As mm. much as right now is the CM Punk show, yep. CM Punk is almost as old as John Cena. And John Cena yep. right now is, old, is like half retired, right? Yeah, yeah. They need a Roman Reigns. I mean, they need somebody younger who yep. can be the cornerstone of that brand going is forward. It- is it going to be Ricky Starks? Is it going to be MJF? Will he finally like make a full-on move to collision? I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Lah. But at yeah. least at least now there is a glimmer of hope as opposed to when, you know, before collision, it was just like the same dynamite every single week. Yeah, yeah. And, and I hope they introduce more players into it. Because you know what? I really like... Uh... I really like the thought of having a big bill in this. Mm. Uh, I really like the thought of even the Miro squash, right? He had against Nick Comorato, right? Yeah. I actually enjoyed Nick Comorato in that match. I don't know if <laughs> you watched it enough, but he I, was really vicious. Right, right, right. Uh, this actually makes me wonder, like, how will All In look like? Because I'm, I, I have a fear as well, right? Like, yeah, you got the good stuff that you want to watch on Collision mm-hmm. and then you have the bullshit, nonsense, flippy crap and it's going to be a mesh of both in a single card. So, you know, like, the the, the flippy shit, the garbage, the, the indie garbage match stuff will ruin the taste for the good matches. It's just the, 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 the same way that Daniel Bryan versus... Um, ah, at Okada? The door. Yeah, Okada. Okada? was kind of super muted, A, because he got injured, and B, because, you know, the double juice, uh, crazy-ass match happened before it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right now, right now, we're seeing a split in the audience, right? Between mm. Dynamite and Collision. And maybe Tony Khan's thinking is like, oh, okay, I'll bring them all back together for pay-per-views, right? So, mm. everyone will watch their matches that they enjoy. Uh, I'm not opposed to that, but I think right the the thing that made the brand wars work back in the early ruthless aggression era right was yep. that they always promote it as a co branded pay per view. Yeah, right. But, and I I like that. But you know he's not going to do it like that. He's just going to do it as a AEW pay per view. You know, like with everything. And he doesn't get the idea that it actually hurts the pay per view, the show as a product. You know, as opposed to yeah. having one entire proper, properly booked thing, you know, mm-hmm. instead of having just everybody with their different matches next to each other, and then you know, yeah lah. and yeah. that's why you have CM Punk and MJF taking the first two matches of Forbidden Door. After that, they f off, go home. We we have to accept like that they will never get rid of like the young bucks or the elite style of wrestling. That's gonna sure. be like a selling point for them, and mm. I don't think per se, is a terrible thing to have like maybe one corner, all that kind of style, right? Yeah. But my issue, and I think you also would agree, if you put them in uh, a pay-per-view, all of them, uh, everyone's going to try to uh, outdo each other to the point yeah. that you might affect the main event. So yeah. this is where Tony Khan needs to come in and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to book you here, you have to do this amount. You can't affect the main event. See, that's where his rules are, right? So, for example, like we talked about, if let's say, um, he has this big card and you got a main event there's going to be a technical masterpiece you know mm-hmm. hey let's not do crazy ass table spots let's not do blading spots here because there's another match that will have a, a blading spot you know that kind of thing hopefully this is where his protocols come into place where he restricts yeah. each match from doing things but will he when the time comes will he say no to his pets his friends mm. Mm. We will have to wait and see. And that will be interesting to see whether he sticks by his guns. Can you imagine a Young Bucks match without 10,000 flips where he's like, no, you cannot do the Indie Taker. You cannot do a 360, 450, whatever bullshit, right? Because somebody else is going to be doing that. Will they say yes? Will they get disgruntled and leave? We'll you know what? Yeah. Mm. You, 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 you might even actually watch a Young Bucks match from start to finish if that happens. Right? You were like, oh, this is a different Young Bucks yeah, yeah. style match. No, <laughs> if, and if they did a technical match, that would probably be the most amazing thing and people will watch because it's so different, right? Like, yeah, we yeah. talked about it before. They can do it one. It's just that they have conditioned themselves to not do it because they know the cheat code. It's like, yeah. it's like you know, uh, you play Street Fighter or you play Mortal Kombat all the time and then uh, suddenly you like got a Game Shark Infinite Life can do every damn thing. Then after that, you don't want to play it normally anymore. What? Because, yeah. you know, uh, you can always win, right? But yeah, of course. Hey, quick shout out. Uh, Peacemaker, Omni-Man, uh, and freaking... Homelander, uh, bro. Homelander. Homelander. Hey, Ooh, uh, I know this is a bit of a sidetrack. Hey, we also can talk gaming news. Huh? Mortal Kombat <laughs> 1 looks amazing. It's coming out in September. Yeah. Your boy is going to stream it on... Um, uh, the, the Twitch account, Mr. Young Gigi, go and follow me there. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely. Yes. I'm, I've always been a fan of Mortal Kombat. Bro, 
secondary school days, I go arcade in my uniform and play. This before there was a rule, you know? I think by your time already got rule. You cannot wear uniform to go into arcade one, right? Well, of course, of course. I think so too. Yeah. My time don't have this rule. I I think I was sec three when they came. Uh, this rule came into effect, bro. Or sec two bro, or sec three. This is like early nineties, mid nineties, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my so god, Mister Young, that's dope. Imagine me in the arcade in my school uniform playing Mortal Kombat and the blood Ooh. and everything. Oh yo! And then the rule came. Then I had to bring extra t shirt lah. But that one, <laughs> that one different story already. But wow, yeah, this dope, this dope. Yeah, the new Mortal Kombat one looks incredible. And you were talking about the DLC, bro. Mm-hmm. Omni Man, Homelander, uh, our boy John Cena. Like I don't know why the review got one blank space there, but no, uh, that's a John Cena <laughs> joke, bro. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I should have laughed. Sorry, I know, bro. Why, 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 why? Uh, <laughs> uh, Peacemaker, which which yeah. okay, I mean he fits. But can I just say, right? I'm mm-hmm. okay. One of my favorite characters in Mortal Kombat is Ermac, and I oh. think the um, did you see Ermac in this review? No, I didn't. Wait, wait, why do you like Omek? Omek is such a random choice for a ninja. Oh, bro. because he's like, he's the mystery ninja, ma. he's a secret character. And I like his moveset ah, as well. He's see, like the telekinesis stuff. But ah, the reveal, okay. when he showed up, I was like, is that, is that, um, why his face looks so horrible? Like, I don't know, this, I don't, I'm not a fan of this new Omek design. Okay, okay, that's funny. He, um, he looked but- Look like he's kind of langa bus or something like that. I, I, I don't know much about Ermac's uh, history, but all I know is like, you know, you know, last time they have so many like different ninja colors, right? Yeah, yeah. I was always a fan of Noob Cyborg because I thought Noob Cyborg was had such a funny backstory, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that they, 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 it was like a, the creator's names inverted or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tobias and Boon. Boon, yeah. So I was like, okay, this is. Fucking hilarious to have like creators yeah. do this kind of like inside joke lah. Yeah. But uh, do you realize that now we have two WWE superstars who have appeared in uh Moto Combat technically? Two? Uh yeah. who, who's the other one? Well, do you remember somebody voice acted as Sonya Blade? Oh, Ronda Rousey. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So like I, I kind of liking uh Loki liking all these uh you know WWE DC mm. or so-called Warner Brothers. Yeah. crossover yeah right um i have to say okay and i know this is not anything to do with wrestling but if you look at the character models and a lot of people are complaining why do they look so like you know they, they don't look like they're old models i mm. think how do i how do i put it nicely because you know i'm a nerd right but yeah. it's like i think people are upset because they look more realistic like humans like like how, okay. your regular, as opposed to the big booby, you know, the face perfect sort of like revealing outfits. Like these, like, I don't know. It's it's so like, oh, don't get me wrong. I appreciated mm. that era of like, oh, look, it's Melina and her boobs are bigger than her head. You know? <laughs> right? right you, okay. Right. But now like everyone's like slightly more covered up and their features look less perfect, less like models, more like real people. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you guys complaining? It looks amazing. Like, yeah, oh. it does. Can, can you explain to me one thing though? Like, why are they restarting back to Mortal Kombat 1? Um, so at the end of Mortal Kombat 11's DLC, Liu Kang restarted time. He got the oh. crown and the chrono, the whatever freaking, whatever like, chrono, whatever oh. bullshit. I forget already lah. But okay, he basically okay. reset the whole universe. I see because I remember last last uh, DLC or the last one was uh, Liu Kang came back to life and then there was like, some weird time time yep. storyline right where they time travel thing time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh um God. he he ga- he beats uh, Chronica and takes control of the time wheel or I forget what it's called uh, and then mm. he remakes the universe so there's less conflict but of course there will always be conflict so this time around instead of Raiden being the god it's Liu Kang the god of fire. I see. Yeah, okay, and, and okay. Ra- Raiden is a character, but he's like more of a regular guy. He's no longer main event. Bro, I tell you what, I don't know how they do it for 20 plus years and keep the storyline going in Mortal Kombat. Like, yeah. it's damn impressive, bro. It's like WWE levels yeah. of continuity, bro. Th- that's why they have to refresh, bro. They have to hit reset once in a while, you know, and, and do, do stuff like that. But so, uh, anyway, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I know that was a side. But let's face it, a lot of us wrestling fans are also video game fans, superhero fans, because it's all yeah. in the same realm of fantasy, right? Fan- fandom, I would say, Fan- pop culture fandom. fandom. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking so- forward. I'm looking forward. Let me know, bro, how the the game goes because uh, I think I've already completed all of AEW's Fight Forever. I think there's nothing much to do with the game anymore. <sighs> I mean, so, yeah, looking for the new games. Yeah. Yeah, same. I also uh, yeah, I I, I finished the game completely um no kitana wasn't with him he did it alone he went solo bro i think he wanted to oh. spend some time away from kitana and explore his wild side no i'm just i don't know i just made <laughs> exploring his options hey bro he got god powers man what do you want man you, you think what he got god powers he he tied himself to one lady come on bro oh dear god okay <laughs> this is another storyline okay you know what last thing bro last thing about motor combat i mm. heard news that motor combat 2 is in production and they the movie. actually have the movie, right? And they are having Carl Urban as Johnny Cage. Do you know about this? So what, what's yes. your thoughts on that? Um, oh, I'm currently watching The Boys, finally. Right? Oh, um, yes. How are you he, feeling about he, it? He's really awesome in the, the show as The Butcher, right? Um, yeah. Sure, he's a versatile actor. I can see it. I know we are a bit upset that it wasn't The Miz because Miz is kind of perfect for Johnny Cage if you think about it. Yeah, he is. But he is not the... Hollywood name la per se yeah, they wanted, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean like a bit poor thing. So whatever la. I mean, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Like the first the, or not the first, but the recent Mortal Kombat movie wasn't horrible, but it wasn't like great. It was just like it was good. It was okay. You know what I mean? It was okay, yeah. It was and the funny thing is, right, actually a lot of people fantasy casted uh mm. Carl Urban as Kano. He would have made more sense as Kano. Oh especially right. with the accent, right? Yeah, but the guy who did Kato was actually one of the best parts of the first movie. So I'm yes, like, yeah, no, 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 yeah. yeah, he cannot, he cannot. So they've they've actually rounded out the cast. So I'm actually excited, very excited to catch the uh, Mortal Kombat movie. So anyway, uh, let's move on from video games, and this segues very nicely because the second they announced the match, you know, mm. on SmackDown, I was like, Shala. Tribal combat sounds like <laughs> Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Bro, if they spell the C, the combat with a K, I, I confirm Mark out on, okay? I'm gone, I'm gone, yeah. And I know. Bro, 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 you yeah. know what they need to do? Have Rikishi. What, Rikishi in the background on the mic go, finish him. No, no, Rikishi need to sit on the throne like Shao Kahn <laughs> like that while watching them fight. Yeah, like... <laughs> As the oh, tribal yeah, elder, yeah. right? Bro, okay, okay. So let's talk about this. I mean, uh, we are like two weeks away from SummerSlam and obviously this yep. feud has been building up, right? And Yes. Well, hey, you called it, bro. The main event of, the, of, of uh, SummerSlam. I didn't think they could do it. So, okay, here's the thing, right? What exactly is tribal combat? They haven't really gone into it. They just teased it, obviously. They're going to set it up for next week. So um, from what we can gather, it's going to be no holes by. But it's... Just no holes, but is it enough? Or do they have to sort of dress it up a little bit more, make it, for lack of a better term, tribal? Like freaking, I don't know, have yeah, the yeah. elders, or Afa, Sika all sit there, Rikishi all sit there. It, bro, that would have been that would be so dope if that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, when they were explaining the ru- the rules of engagement, I mean, they really didn't explain much. They were just no. cutting promos on each other. Yeah. Uh, I let, let's just talk about that quickly before we talk about like the possibilities of the match. What do you think of the two of them holding hands forehead to forehead or each other? I, did, I thought that was a powerful no. moment in my yes, opinion. Yes, absolutely. I think it lends credence to this whole tribal culture, you know, the, the Samoan culture in that instead of like yelling at each other and fighting each other, like this is like, it made the idea of tribal combat seem mm. more important than it is. Because at the end of the yeah. day, it's just a term, right? It's going to be a glorified um, no holds barred match. That's what it is. Yeah. But the fact that they did not come to blows, in fact, Roman stopped Solo from um, yeah. you know, hitting him and attacking him, right? So it yeah. lends like gravitas, importance, like, no, this is, this is it. This is like a tradition, you know? Mm. Uh, they told a story as opposed to having yeah. it be a big, small cluster F. It was powerful, lah. It was, yeah. That, that was the, the term I was to, looking for. It was really a powerful moment. And mm. again, like going back to the possibilities of the match stipulation, right? Yeah, of course, we, we should be expecting a no holds part match. Bro, but it, the, it, bro, this is cinema. It is, it is. <laughs> can, bro, can you imagine, bro? Can you imagine, right? Mm. Something similar to Black Panther, Oh, right? the waterfall scene. Ah. Yeah, when they are fighting for like the who can be the ruler or who can be considered king, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I want that level of 
maybe they, I mean not similar in the sense, but like the 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 spirit of it, right? They had to fight. <laughs> For the honor becoming tribal chief, bro, bro, don't give them ideas, ah, uh, because they are not going to set up a waterfall set, right? This scully, they do AR effects, you know, that augmented oh. reality, they got a fake waterfall at the back. Okay, oh, okay, okay, no. Um, okay, what, would, okay, what will uh, they include the ring? That's my question because I, in my mind, I don't see it as a yes. ring match, bro. That's exactly what I was thinking in my mind. Like they, if this was probably going to be the last match, main event, right? Mm-hmm. They tear down the whole ring and it becomes like just. The, okay, like maybe okay. I don't know if they can tear it down though. Maybe what they do is they remove the ropes and it is like a circle. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. It, Tribal combat. Does that make sense? I I don't know how they will dress it, but yeah, if they can make it so that maybe they surround it with some No, I don't <laughs> know. Okay, I don't want lumber, them- bro. Yeah, last thing we want is a lumberjack match. Okay, okay. If it's a lumberjack match, it's fine. But they need to like dress it up better, lah, for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the purists will feel about a uh, essentially a no ropes fight pit style kind of match, right? Where you mm. have no ropes, it's just the like the canvas, and then like yeah. you have all the Samoan elders like sitting in a throne, you know, like freaking like uh, yeah, yeah. Um, like the gods from Love and Thunder, you know, all sitting yeah. on a high high throne like that, watching the match. So who sits on top? Well, technically, they still have Alpha and Sika still alive, which oh, is the so father, they, yeah, yeah. father of Roman Reigns, right? Uh, oh, it would so, be damn cool, you know why? If why? Alpha and Sika or uh, Sika, I think Roman Reigns' father, mm. corners uh, Roman Reigns, uh. sits at the at the, at the throne, Rikishi corners Uso sits at the throne and both of them together. So oh. it's like they are, they are mentors like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I would like that none of them get involved. Like, yep. I don't want any of these elders to even touch anything. Like, it needs to be Roman versus Jay, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, who say? Macam like, Akibono versus Big Show, bro. Remember that? <laughs> How could I remember WrestleMania 21? Oh, that's uh, Sumo right. match. Oh, no. Do, do, do you remember that one time where Big Show or somebody fought against like a... Uh, like like some sort of Samoan wrestler... No, some sort of sumo wrestler in Akibono uh, Saudi... La. Oh, no, in, no, in Saudi, Saudi yeah, Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. And then they thought it was freaking Yokozuna. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Like, this guy just randomly shows up. Um, okay, so, I think we are both in agreement, actually. We literally have the same vision for this. Like, yep. a, a fight pit style where all the tribal elders are... Okay, do they go as far as, like, you know, like, having hoo-hoo-hoo, this is our tribal uh, music? Uh, that, like, I is that a bit much? Know. A bit, I think they might check with uh, cultural appropriation, make sure <laughs> the Samoans are uh, uh, okay referred first. to. Yeah, they yeah. must make sure they really represent the culture. But one thing uh, Tovaki brought up, Zila Fatu. So that, that's uh, Umaga's son that just debuted in wrestling. Mm. I'm thinking more along the lines of Jacob Fatu, which is an MLW champion. They need to introduce, in my opinion, when this match ends, they yeah. need to introduce somebody new into the story. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Look, like we we know that it's going to be Roman who wins, right? Whether he wins by cheating or some shenanigans, Roman has to win here, right? Like I mean that that kind of is goes without saying. Maybe the story is like yeah, Roman barely keeps on to his throne, right? Yeah, maybe but, but he still story. wins. Like he can't lose the title. Like as much as we love Jay right now, he's not the main guy. Yeah, I mean of course everyone still wants the story to go back to Cody and Roman and WrestleMania yeah. forty, right? Uh, but that's why I say like they need to introduce a new element so it mm. makes sense like for example if Jay gets screwed out um, and like you know because the Roman Empire or the the head of the table has lost his bloodline he recreates a new bloodline mm. in, in a new image right because that's why a part of me like a very small part of me like oh what if Jay also wins and he recreates a bloodline in his image as a right. new tribal chief that right. would be so cool but yeah no, but logic wise. Yeah, I don't yeah. That that's okay. Like you had me at I'll even I'll concede Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso at SummerSlam. But not Jay Uso winning and starting his own bloodline. Like he's no no no. Roman Reigns bro, is still the main guy. He's the money drawing act. Bro, that's like the Motor Combat reset character, reset yeah. universe. Uh, that would be cool, lah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but it's not gonna happen, right? So yeah. So back to the point is how do they do it such that you're right, they need to introduce, but it cannot be uh like a guy that nobody has ever seen before, not even on NXT, right? So Solo may pay, play a role here, but ultimately this has to be Roman versus Jay. 
I mean, oh, if there's a time for The Rock to finally make his appearance... This would be the perfect time, honestly. Th- this or, has honestly, to be it, right? Yeah, it would. It would be. But I would even dare say if they're not going to pull the trigger on The Rock versus Roman for WrestleMania, mm. they should do it like for a Survivor Series or something where yeah. it steps as another stepping stone for you know like Roman to defeat. Mm. But again, what, what's The Rock's schedule? We, nobody knows, right? Correct, nobody knows correct. that he will come back. He, he's busy doing, you know, Hollywood stuff, lah. So, um, actually, I don't think there's a big rock um, project coming out anytime soon. So maybe, you know, like, got potential, lah. That it is. Well, the, uh, de- and, definitely no bl- no Black Adam 2 coming um, out, lah. That's what. I'm... No, and well, here's the thing. He needs to rehab his image a little bit. Let's he just did, say that did. after Black Adam, he sort of lost a bit of his goodwill, the Hollywood goodwill, because of all the, yeah. you know, the... The he said she said about how he didn't want to you know um have his character meet with Shazam blah 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 and then he brought yeah. in Henry Cavill only for Henry Cavill to get fired it's like he lost a lot of his like goodwill a bit lah and also I think um when he appeared I mean spoilers for those who haven't watched Fast X yeah. when he appeared in the cameo post, right yeah. uh, post credit scene it almost felt like a lot of people say ah you see tail between their legs ah yeah, uh, want to he, chabot come back yeah he come back because he had to right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, WWE run will be a great. This will be the best timing, lah. Like, to rehab his career right now. Yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, come back, do the thing with Roman. Roman is as hot as he'll be. Rock is always going to be hot. Leading up to WrestleMania, boom, main event. Oh, Cody. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. This is uh, it's exciting times to be a WWE fan. I mean, you know, we will go into the actual preview of SummerSlam as we get closer to SummerSlam. Obviously, so many matches we want to talk about, and that's the good thing, yeah. the great thing about WWE, right? It's like uh, on many levels, yeah. there are things to talk about. It is. It is. I just wanna before we wrap up our WWE conversation, I'll wrap up, uh, talk about a couple more things, right? Um, mm. I know you didn't watch a bit of Raw, yeah, but Raw, I think they ended it with like a like a. Contract signing between Finn Balor and uh, Seth? Seth Rollins. So, mm. Balor and Rollins are, you know, uh, going back to SummerSlam seven years later, right? Wow. It's very clear now that the bloodline is being dissolved. Mm. Judgment Day is going to be the number one faction. Yep. Not just on Raw, but throughout WWE because you see Dom winning yep. the NXT American Championship, oh, right? Can we very quickly say what a freaking great idea that is? It like, is, it is. You know, yeah. I know it, it sucks for Wesley, but... Yeah. You 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 don't halt the momentum of Gunter or Austin Theory. You mm. get him a title that means something because it's on NXT. But yet it's like, why well, you just give him even more heat because this CB face suddenly now got championship and he can per- yeah. like wow, you just pile yeah. even more heat on him. Great and, idea. and I know and I know you've been a fan of NXT recently, so to yes. have him yes. and actually I I watched that highlights right. Mm. The Judgment Day appearing on NXT felt like a big moment. My it opinion, did. It, it did. They now feel like big deals. Yeah, yeah. So it's really good for NXT. And bro, we made it almost to the end of the podcast without even mentioning the, the guy that got shafted, bro. Oh, 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 the guy got shafted. Who got shafted? What are you talking about? Bro, I, I okay. Who, who you thought I was talking about? I don't know who, who you... Thought? I thought you were talking about like we made it to the end of the podcast without some equipment failing. Oh, no, 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 no. We made it to the end of the podcast without mentioning the hottest star outside of the bloodline on SmackDown, bro. That recently huh? kind of screwed out of a title opportunity, oh, bro. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, you you're talking about L A Knight, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's in this very weird spot. He's in this very weird spot where he is super over. So I think they feel like he doesn't need wins. Mm. Y- you know, like mm-hmm. he literally just needs to show up, do an entrance, people will cheer. That's it. Like he doesn't even need to wrestle at this point, right? That's how mm-hmm. over he is. But okay, do you feel. Is Sorry, it to his detriment? You, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like WWE is using him to push other people? Giving he using his route to give somebody like Santos Escobar. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I think they might look at his age and think of it as a you know an issue. It's like, once again, it's like the Dolph Ziggler problem, right? You know, he will put on a good match with you, he will get you over, uh, but he's never gonna get pushed. Which, which sucks, you, but, but the difference is, okay, the difference is Dolph Ziggler was a former world champion, so at least you can parade that title around. LA Knight hasn't had his shot yet. So bro, why? What, yeah. How do you feel about him losing that fatal four weight of all people to Rey Mysterio? It's not as if he's like Santos Escobar or like yeah. Seamus Cameron Grimes. It's Rey Mysterio who doesn't need this at all. Unfortunately, I think the whole idea is to set up Rey versus Escobar and then maybe Escobar turning on Rey to push Escobar, you know? So he became um, a, 
a cog in the machine. The the plan is to have Ray versus Santos. Very quickly, do you think Santos will turn on Ray after the match? I, I um, well, he he looks more of a heel, and he was a much better heel, you know, in yeah. NXT. So yeah. why not? I think I think like, they should. Yeah, like he does, he does like a corporate takeover, like not a corporate takeover. You know what I mean, like he like you know yeah. viciously destroys Ray, you know wrests control of the LWO away from Ray, and then yeah, there you go. Then you have the next feud, which is Santos versus Ray. Well, and another thing as well, we didn't mention Ray Mysterio doesn't really need the title at this point in time. No. No. Everyone and their mother wanted LA Knight and Austin Theory, right? Yeah. Because yeah. They, they were talking about how Austin Theory wishes he had LA Knight's charisma, right? Yeah, yeah. So, they, I think they lost an opportunity there. Because now, if, even if it's Ray winning, even if it's Santos winning, who cares about that match with Austin Theory? Let's that's true. That, that's true. And even, okay, let's say you got Santos versus Austin. Okay, will the most boring outcome be Santos wins, they shake hands, mm. they hug hug because LWO. And then Santos goes on to fight Austin Theory. And then, yeah. you know, that would be Probably. the most boring, right? It will be fucking boring. I agree with Tobakin. I really hope they don't push LA Knight too late. A mm. part of me, bro, somehow if LA Knight can low-key somehow finagle his way into this title Tri- match and become a yeah. triple threat, I'll be yeah. so happy. I think the crowd will be super hot for him as well. Pia says Santos should turn heel and then, L- you know what? What if Santos turns heel, wins the US titles over uh, Austin Theory and then you got Santos versus LA Knight? Of course. I think LA Knight should be the eventual winner. No matter, every single scenario <laughs> needs to end with LA Knight winning the US title. In my or, opinion. or, bear with me, I know it's several months before January. But mm. what if they just say, okay, you know what? We, he's, this guy is talented enough to hold his heat all the way. Let's just have him win the Rumble. Woo! Bro, I mean, LA, LA he, Knight win the Rumble, do yeah. a Bain War, transfer to Raw Challengers. Rollins. There you go. There you go. And you purposely just deny the fans. Deny, deny, deny until he it becomes this ground swell, this yes movement, you know? Like, I think yeah. WWE, uh, Triple H is not dumb. He's probably yeah. seen this before and he's like, okay, we could give it to him now. Give the audience what they want now. Or, this, 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 until we blue balls, bro. We blue balls. <laughs> Then, finally, <laughs> Rumble. That's when you get to release, bro. Bro, WrestleMania 40 is called the... It's the cock tease of all WrestleManias, bro. <laughs> Cody Rhodes and Elena. Is that what you're trying to say, bro? Yes, yes. One fella got to wait one year to get his rematch. The other one have to wait don't know how many months to get to Royal Rumble, bro. Let's go. Let's do that, man. I, I'm we, all for the tease. I'm all for the tease. Bro, we have made a prediction on this podcast a few months ago that I said eventually Jay and Roman's going to fight at some step. It has happened. Yes. So, is this your prediction? LA Knight will get his deserved title, whichever title it is, at WrestleMania? Yes, let's go. LA Knight versus Damien Priest. Because, because you know, Damien Priest will win the title eventually, right? Well, I mean, he has the money in the bank. He's almost guaranteed. And look at him. He is championship. Okay, where's Div Royalty? I know she's very happy to hear this. <laughs> like, Div obviously, Royalty. like, you, you talked about, like, Judgment Day. They are going to be the main faction once the bloodline dissolves, right? So, yeah. you have main uh, Damien Priest with the championship. I'm sure he'll feud with Finn Balor at some point, And then, who better than to, you know, like, all of a sudden become... The uh, friggin' uh, number one contender. So you have LA Knight versus Damien Priest, which is a pretty fresh yeah. matchup as well. It is, it is. Well, all in all, like again, every time we talk about WWE, there's always possibilities. There's mm-hmm. always excitement. There's always like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah. Which is the far cry for the other friends. So yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but you know what? Like we always say, wrestling is cyclical. You know, one will swing one way, the other one will swing the, swing the other way. Uh, we'll see. Like, who knows? Maybe next week, suddenly we see the headline, Vince McMahon back in charge. Oh, habis. You know? Uh, yeah, rubber, yeah. S- Stephanie McMahon, now the C, uh, the, the head booker of AEW. Uh, okay, oh, nah, dear that. God, dear God. Uh, no, no, that's well, let's, happen. Yeah, yeah let's, let's hope not. But uh, you know what? It's a great time. I think next week we'll definitely preview SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, and as well, uh, over on the local wrestling front, I think maybe we should give a, give a quick plug. Uh, at the end of... Oh, actually, this weekend, this Saturday, Grapple Max is going to have his uh, open house. It's happening oh, yes. this Saturday. Yes. That's right. And I um, believe it's their last time in that Tampines, uh, Jim Tampines, Craft. Jim Craft, yeah, in that building. So that's right. Yeah. So th- those of you who have missed local wrestling, uh, you know, we go, we're gonna come. You know, they're coming back hot with a bunch of shows to catch out. Uh, to catch 
not just Grapple Max. We have SPW have already announced they're gonna bring back Riho. Hmm. They're gonna bring back. Uh, they're gonna bring Yoshitatsu. So hey, hey. All, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very quickly. So okay, I have the information in front of me, right? Grapple Max house party is this Saturday, 29th July. Yeah. I don't know if there are tickets still, but uh, it, go, you can always go and check like at their website. So mm-hmm. that's gonna be like a thank you, Jim Craft edition. So like we mentioned before, like, they have big um. They have big things ahead, and I'm actually very excited to see where they go, you know? Uh, but yeah, it, we, we shan't say too much. We'll let them announce what they need to announce, right? And then you talked mm. about SPW. Uh, yes, they are doing a big show, SPW Valor, that is yes. happening. Uh, let me get the details real quick. SPW Valor, 18th of August. Okay, Friday mm-hmm. evening at the Fu Chao building once again. Uh, yep. And uh, our, our guy, the statement, he's back, right? And yes. I have a very... This is the most random observation, bro. Okay? Mm. But you see, uh, you got SPW Valor, Yoshitatsu, uh, excuse me, versus Aiden Rex. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want you to see, look, look at Yoshitatsu, right? Uh-huh. uh-huh. You see his pose, right? You see his yes, pose. correct. And then the other main event is um, the Statement versus Carlo Cannon. Okay, the post same also. The post very so, similar. Yeah. So my question is, uh, why are two Singapore guys fighting foreigners who cover their face? What is the <laughs> what is the theme here? There's some hidden meaning there, bro. We need to dig further. We need to do our put our yeah. investigative. Why right. and also who is this Carlo Ken? He looks he looks mad. He looks like a crazy fella. He looks like he should be fighting the butcher man. I actually honestly I thought it was butcher man at first, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. No, doesn't yeah. he look like the butcher man? So who is this fella? We need to find out more. Is it from my PW of one of the Malaysia promotions? We need to uh, dig out a bit more. So he's he's yeah. from a he's an Australian veteran. Ah, Australia, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of Australian, mm. I think next week is the date we might have a special guest as well on our okay. show, Mister okay. Young. Uh, yes. Exciting times. All right, yeah. so there you go. Um, preview of things to come as always. Just you know, head over to our Discord. Like we'll announce things there. Announce things on our Instagram also. So there you go. Okay. Um, I think I think it's time to let everybody go back to do their work. Yeah, bro. We covered mostly what everything we wanted to cover uh, in within one and a half hours. So good e- job, Mister Young. Exactly. <laughs> and all praise Tony Khan. Thank you very. Oh much. yes. Thank you, Tony Khan. You're the man. <laughs> For letting us do this podcast, everybody. Thank you for hanging out as well. As usual, Discord link is in the description. Come join us on Discord to continue the conversation. Support us on Patreon, guys. Keep mm. us, uh, keep, keep the likes on. Keep the internet on for all of us. Yes. Please consider supporting us on on uh, Patreon as well. Uh, links are in the description as well for Patreon, Discord, and all that good stuff. All our socials, like okay. Um, we'll catch you guys next week. But as always, it's Mister Young. And it's for an end to building. Take care.